Hey and welcome to another video. And in this video I'm going to create the stove again. So this time I want to make a stove out of these little can candles and I don't know how it's called in English and it's some kind of candle casing aluminum of course. And I took three of them, they're super cheap, just a few cents per piece. And I take two of the three and remove the candle. They are glued to the bottom, so I use the pair of pliers to pull them out. Then you should be left with two of these candle casings and the third candle. And this will be used later. But first I'm going to create a stove. And as interior, instead of white tongue, which I used last time, I use cotton this time because it's easier to work with and it does not dirt so much and I think for you it's easier to access. So it can be cut with the scissors and get it in pretty much every store. I cut the whole bundle with the scissors and it worked well and it just fills up the whole candle case. So it will hold the alcohol and prevents it from spilling out and additionally it prevents explosion inside the stove because no alcohol air mix can form and therefore explode. To fit the two casings together I make this nice room with a pair of pliers again and you see they fit together instantly. Now the stove needs a top hole and I will insert the screw into it and the screw has a hole in itself so that makes it easier to add alcohol with a syringe later if you don't want to open the stove. So I drill a hole into the candle casing, put the screw through and fix it with a washer and nut. I have to say that this is a forced stove. That means that the alcohol is forced to evaporate by a candle that is placed underneath the stove. This design is not super useful if you want to go on survival trips or something like this but it's a lot more powerful than conventional stove designs. Although it does not create a nice and clear blue flame, so it does not provide full combustion, it has a very very powerful flame at a very tiny burner size and this allows you to heat up objects very very fast, but on the other hand the fuel will be empty pretty soon. But I just want to demonstrate the stove because it's another type and it doesn't work on its own. And it has to be fed with some extra energy. In this case the candle provides this energy. Here you see the stove fully made up and it's important that there is that there are some holes at the rim for the alcohol to come out later because the hole in the screw is too small. Now I'm going to make a basic setup, but first I'm going to fill it with alcohol. And you see the alcohol is soaked up by the cotton, and surprisingly the cotton does not burn. So the cotton won't char at all, and it will stay alive for a lot of turns you are going to read the alcohol. Now I ignite the candle in the testing range, make sure that there are holes so that air can come in, and then I place the burner on top of the triangle, and here is it. And now let's do a first test. I've modified the setup because it didn't work out with these angles and the metal bars, it was just too close, so the candle needs more air to burn. And you see that alcohol started to evaporate and it's a very very strong and powerful flame and the alcohol is pushed out of the burner with high pressure. So it's really a bit like a propane torch. If you would add some proper air mixing it would probably sound like a propane torch and look like one. 
So it's a really, really high flame for such a small burner. Even with a lot bigger burners, it's not usual to get this great and powerful flames. But I have a test to show you how powerful this flame actually is. So while this is burning, can go a bit into detail. The stove would be super perfect if it had some casing, which I might build in the future, which has a narrow gap between the pressurized output and a nozzle on top, so that the pressurized alcohol vapor could take some air with it and suck it in like a vacuum fan and then mix with the alcohol vapor, go through a wire net to prevent the flame to go back in the stove and then combust outside the nozzle with a nice blue flame. But for the beginning I'm okay with the setup because it's just super super powerful and that's what I like, big flames. You see the cotton is not burned at all, so it survived pretty good and I won't build any white house stoves because anymore because I think it's pretty hard to access sometimes and these cotton stoves prevent spilling as well and it works all fine. While I'm reloading the stove, you can see that I put again some aluminum foil underneath and I think it's just important because if there is some incident, some explosion, whatever, and it's flame spilling, although my rope plate is flame resistant, it prevents, it's just another safety measure with it. So now I place the candle again under the steel and align it, and there it goes. No, it does not go. Now it goes. It needed quite a while to heat up for the stove that the alcohol starts to evaporate. And again, it's the second burn just now. Nice flame, nice burning. But this time I want to demonstrate how hot and how powerful this flame actually is. So I take a piece of metal and put it inside the flames. I do this with my fingers at the beginning and as soon as it starts to get hot I have to pull it out but you can see that the flame really enclosures the metal angle and now I'm going to look out for a cut splice to grab this angle and put it above yes like this you see the flame really enclosing it and it's a very strong blue flame and if you would put a pot on top of this it would heat up pretty quickly so thank you for watching hope you enjoyed